Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at PagerDuty Summit in San Francisco at Pier 27. I got to look at it, I've never been here before. It's a cool facility right on the water between Pier 39 and, and the, uh, the Bay Bridge. We're really excited to have back. I can't believe it's been like three years. I have Sheila Jordan, she's the CIO of Symantec and last we saw you was, I looked it up, it was ServiceNow Knowledge 2014. Yes, so that's Sheila, correct. Sheila, great yes, to see you. Nice to see you, thanks Absolutely. for being here. So I think when we first talked, you were just starting in your role at Symantec mm -hmm. and now you're three years into it. You just mm -hmm got off a, a panel about leading digital transformation. So just give us kind of a general view of what you've been up to yeah. and how has that journey been progressing? Right, well it's been quite a journey and I would say that it's been really a transformational journey. So the vision for, for Symantec really is to become the largest cybersecurity company in the world. And that vision really started two, two and a half years ago and I'd say that today it's a reality. Um, when I was hired, I was actually hired to insource IT so we completed that and then we went through the Veritas separation. So we separated the company with Veritas, which was a pretty significant separation. And then subsequently we've acquired you know, four or five companies. Uh, we've recently acquired the Blue Coat company, which with that acquisition we get our CEO, Blue, uh, Greg Clark. And then we also have acquired some other companies on the consumer side. So the LifeLock uh, business is really tied to our consumer digital safety. So we've been very busy and now we've just announced a small divestiture on our website security business. So right. lots of acquisitions, lots of change, lots of transformation that really we've been uh, bringing into the organization. Right, and, and you talked on the panel, you know, your job is you got to keep the lights on right and keep things moving. And then you've got this acquisition and in your yeah. case, big, uh, the split, the divestiture. Right. Um, but then you still want to innovate, and right. you talked about you know looking at new applications. Right. And I thought a really interesting comment you made was about shadow IT. Right. And to sh not, shadow IT is not all bad. There's a right. reason that somebody decided to take that action and really to try to understand why and what was the application right. requirement, and not just throw right. it out as right. as unauthorized use. Pretty right. interesting uh, lesson. Well, a couple of things on that. So working in an engineering organization, you can't ignore when there's apps being used and come up because there's a need. Obviously there's a need that the IT organization isn't providing, and so how, what is that need and what is that capability that the organization is looking for? Now, the cool thing is we have technology called CASB, which is the Cloud Access Security Broker, that allows us to look at the entire environment of what both uh, cloud applications of who's using what. So for example, we are sanctioned and our standard is Box. But I can look across the organization and see what cloud applications we're using, and if Dropbox appears, that's the question to say, no, that doesn't make sense, our standards box. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that all other applications that might be coming out that the engineering organization is using, we should be asking ourselves why, what capability are we not delivering, and how do we bring that into our, the kind of the RT, IT arsenal? Right, right. And, and it's interesting you bring up the box example, because another thing you talked about on this stage was your cloud adoption. Right. And, right. and so kind of, you, you threw out a number, 62%. Right. So I'm not exactly sure what right. 62% is, but where was it when you got yeah. there? What is 62%? What are you measuring? And, and there's conversations about you know, direct ROI, but it's a, it's a much more complicated right. formula than just a simple ROI. Yes, it really is. And I would say that, first of all, from an IT perspective, I think any CIO has the obligation to help the organization run, change, and grow. And forward-thinking CEOs really understand that technology can be used to not only run the company, that's kind of old school legacy, right, total right. cost of ownership cost, really super important, but it's not only run, but how do you use the technology to change and grow? So when you have opportunities like SaaS that allow the CIOs to have to reduce our total cost of ownership, be more agile, have the SaaS providers update their products and solutions and all of that, that, that's kind of on the SaaS providers, it makes our job a little easier. Or different, I'd say. Right. Um, and what I mean by that is that the role of the CE CIO hasn't changed. Our job is to protect the company's assets. You know, All of our company assets and our data, whether that's customer data, employee data, partner data. And yet, five or so, seven years ago, it was these monolithic applications, it was a private data center, an on-prem on physical data center, it was massive, a monolithic you know, PCs, all, all of that has changed. So the role hasn't changed, but now we've got to think about SaaS applications, cloud, infrastructure as a service, public cloud on the infrastructure side. We think about all the applications that are coming in on our mobile devices. We think about IoT, we think about you know, structured and unstructured data. So our role is the same, but how we have to manage that complexity to help our companies and enable our companies run, change, and grow, right. it's just very different. And do you get involved in kind of uh, investigating kind of the second order impacts, you know, kind of the, the law of unintended positive consequences by going to a SaaS application, for instance, or going to some of these platforms that doesn't show up 
in, in the simple ROI analysis. No, not, I agree with that. But I also think it's it's total cost of ownership, but it's also as important today as agility. You know, everyone wants to get to market faster. Everyone right. wants to be able to be more productive. So it's really the combination of both total cost of ownership and agility. Yeah, you said an interesting thing too. Speed is a habit, which is a really interesting quote because everybody wants speed. Right, absolutely. Um, and there's, we just had another guest that talked about speed, you know, actually does correlate to better software right, right. Um, because it forces you to do right. that. But everybody wants speed, right, you know, right. you, gotta, you gotta have it. Right. So the other, you were all over the back, I got notes <laughs> we could go on all day, I won't go on all day, but um, when somebody talked about what are the limits? What are the limits of applications? And you made a really interesting comment that at the end of the day, it's just about the data flow and yeah. having a, a horizontal view from your seat you may find that there's other ways to skin that cat based on what other people are doing. Right, so I would say that one of the reasons I love being in IT is we, we see horizontally. I mean, there's many functions in the company that see you know in their silos, but right, we get to right. see horizontally, which means we see the redundancies in an organization and some of the gaps. And so, and as the world changes that, it's less about these monolithic huge applications, but more about cloud and SaaS it really becomes important about the data flow. Where is the data? Not only is it in that, say, uh, Salesforce application, but how does that Salesforce application move to a box? And how does that content move from box to, say, some of the collaboration tools and technology? And how does that move and flow? So our role has to be about, one, understanding the data flow and really where that exists and how do we enable the entire business, every function to be even more productive, but also how we protect and secure that. So right. I think it's so exciting that not only are we doing our view in IT is to deliver that unified end-to-end -end experience, and it all comes down to the a reference architecture approach. But the other part why I'm so excited about Semantic is because we're moving into the notion and the vision of having an integrated cyber defense platform. And I'll explain that for one second, because historically the, the security business has been really fragmented. Point solutions to protect every layer of your architecture. Right, so whether right. you had a point solution in infrastructure, or endpoints, or data, or at the web gateway layer, whatever that was. And what happened is, over time, our recent report would suggest that a large enterprise has anywhere between 65 and 85 security products in their enterprise, large, large enterprise. 65 to 85. Security products. Point solutions. In their enterprise. <laughs> yeah, and so Tough it becomes, manage. yeah, it really does. So one of the visions that Greg Clark and Mike Fay have for our company is why can't we be and deliver this integrated cyber defense platform? Because it's really connected. We then have products that will live at each layer of the architecture, but connected. Right. And so the really super cool thing about that is that the white spaces between those fragmented products really are breathing grounds for the bad guys to come in and stay a while and sit and watch and observe. Right. If you have all that right. legacy technology and legacy applications, it just becomes a breeding ground. And when you have an integrated cyber defense platform that actually allows it to be much more integrated and really reduce some of the risks and offer you know, our CISOs and our customers a better opportunity to effectively manage their environments. Right, and you guys are a security company, yes. but also you're a CIO trying to protect stuff, so you're in, you're in a really yes. good spot. Because yes. the other thing that's happening is this radical increase in the tax services, especially as we go beyond cloud and APIs to the edge economy and, and IoT devices. So right. as you kind of look at the future, both for protecting your own stuff, but also helping to deliver the products for your customers, the security space is really, really rapidly evolving. Right. Rapidly evolving and becoming even more important because again, the flow of data from your Salesforce application to your mobile device, to IoT, back to a content solution, back to some of the collaboration, the flow of data is now in app to app or SaaS to SaaS, SaaS to device, device to you know infrastructure as a service. So it really is the flow of data is so dynamic and so security becomes just super critical to make sure we're securing that data in motion. Right, right, yeah, it's crazy. And even if you have the most secure right. systems, you, you might have lapses in protocol, right, which right. we are like some of the AWS right. breaches where somebody didn't configure Do something right. Yes, exactly. Um, all right, so I, I could keep you here all day, but I won't. <laughs> um, but I would give you the last word. Uh, what's next? And, and there was a little bit of conversation on the panel, so I want to open that yeah. up again. As you kind of look forward, we're kind of, the cloud thing's kind of done, the API thing is kind of done. As you look forward, what's kind of the next, I don't never say five years in this business, right. next couple of years that you're excited about to move the industry forward? Yeah, well I actually think, and I know it might be an overused term, but I really think that we're just scratching the surface on AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. We're using a lot of that in our products today and how we're building our security products. But when I think about corporate IT and I think about how we deliver statistics and information about our business. So transactional reporting on bookings and revenue and forecasts and expenses. 
there's, there needs to be a better, more pr predictive way of analyzing that data right. and understanding it in a much more sophisticated AI, um, you know, machine learning that we get our customer insights and we really start to use those insights into building out that kind of knowledge as we move forward. Right. So I look forward to really beginning to really, really have some strategies around AI and machine learning in corporate IT. All right, well, Sheila Jordan, it's great to see you. Hopefully <laughs> nice it won't be uh, three, three years, years till we now, see right? you again. <laughs> right. CIO of Semantic, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from PagerDuty Summit in San Francisco. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much.